Introduction to Microsoft Publisher 2016 Publisher 2016 is Microsoft's entry-level desktop publishing program. Not to be confused with Microsoft Word, Publisher is used primarily for page layouts and designs, such as brochures and flyers, while Word is used for documents, such as letters and reports. Although Publisher can be used by anyone, it was created for the small business user in mind as a basic, easier to use alternative to the more expensive Adobe graphics program. The software program was created with small businesses in mind more than the home user. Therefore, it is only available with a subscription to Office 365 Personal, Home or Business, or when you purchase Office 2016 Professional. Publisher allows small businesses to quickly create publications for the web or print. You can easily create professional looking publications by either creating them yourself from scratch or using one of the many pre-designed templates that Publisher offers. These templates can easily be customized for the look that you want. You can use Publisher to create brochures, labels, greeting cards, certificates, flyers, invitations, photo albums and more. You can create advertisements for your business, event announcements, awards and the list goes on. You can even create bookmarks and stickers using Publisher. The primary difference between Publisher and other desktop publishing software programs is that Publisher makes the tasks easier for you to complete. That means you don't have to be a graphics design professional to be successful using this program. All that's required is knowledge of the program and a little creativity, and you're on your way to creating stunning publications. This course was designed to teach you skills you'll need to successfully use Publisher 2016. Each lesson contains step-by-step -step instructions and explanations to show you how to use the features, then walks you through so you can see how everything is done. You don't need previous experience with Publisher to be able to complete this course. This course will start with basic skills, then move forward to more advanced features and techniques. Each lesson contains a lesson exercise at the end that contains multiple choice and true or false questions. These exercises make up your course grade and are required to be completed. You'll also find a lesson assignment at the end of each lesson. These are optional and do not factor into your course grade. However, if you have access to Publisher 2016, it's highly encouraged that you complete them. The assignments were created to give you hands-on practice using the skills you learned in the previous lesson. In addition to the exercises and assignments, you'll also find a course project at the end of every fourth lesson. The course project is similar to the lesson assignments in that it is optional and contains hands-on practice. However, the course project also gives you the chance to design your very first publication using step-by-step -step instructions. The flyer you will create gives you the chance to put your new skills to work and get used to using Publisher to create desktop publications. You do not need access to Publisher 2016 to successfully complete this course unless you wish to complete the assignments and the course project. Since Microsoft Publisher is a desktop publishing software program, it's just as important to learn more about layout and design as well as to learn about Publisher. That said, before we delve into the technical aspects of Publisher itself and teach you how to use it, let's learn some basic principles of good design. You'll find that this information will help you use Publisher to create more professional and beautiful publications and designs. Here are the aspects of good design and layout. Alignment. Alignment refers to the placement of text and graphics so that they line up on a page. It helps to create attractive pages. You can use alignments to group items, create order, or organize the page elements. Alignment can be horizontal, vertical, or you can line up text and objects along their top, bottom, left or right edges. Balance is achieved by making sure elements are evenly distributed on a page. You don't want to have one section with dozens of pictures, the next with none, or everything lined up on the side of the page and nothing on the other. White space is a space in your layout and design that has nothing in it. It's just blank space, or white space. 
it's important to have enough white space so the page is easy to look at and to read. You don't want to cram in pictures and text. It looks like a traffic jam for the eyes. Proximity. When you place objects close together on a page, you group them together and suggest a relationship. If you place objects far apart, it suggests a lack of relationship. This is important to remember in design. Group objects that are related close together. For example, you can group pictures and text together. Put the picture near the related text, not in some other section where it's out of place. Contrast. If you put all square shapes in your design, not one part of your design would stand out, would it? Use big and small elements, different shapes, and even different colours of text to achieve contrast. It makes for a more attractive design. Unity. All the different objects and pieces in your design should tie together and become a whole. Consistency and repetition. Repeating use of design styles, font types, and design elements helps someone to easier navigate your design and find what they need. This is especially important if you are designing monthly newsletters or brochures. These are all things that you must keep in mind whenever you design a layout in Publisher or any other desktop publishing software. The great thing about Publisher 2016 is that you can use templates to make your work quicker and easier. However, if you need or want to design your own pieces, these terms are what you need to apply to your work to create stunning presentations. With the launch of Office 2013, Microsoft made changes in how they sell their most popular software package. Of course, you can download a free trial by simply going to the Microsoft Office page, picking out what version you want to try, then downloading the software. You don't need a credit card to try the software. If you want to purchase the software, Microsoft now gives you several choices. You can purchase Microsoft Publisher as a standalone program by going to the Microsoft website. At the time this course was created, the price was $109. You can also buy Microsoft Office, which includes other Office programs such as Excel. The price to buy the software varies depending on what version you wish to purchase. There are three versions, Home and Student, Home and Business and Professional. As with other versions of Office, it's a one-time charge and the software is yours to use as long as you wish. You can buy Office directly from Microsoft or an approved retailer. With Office 365, you'll be able to download the Office program to your computer just as if you had purchased them. The only difference is you'll pay either a monthly or a yearly subscription price in order to keep the program active and functional. The price of your subscription will be determined by the version that you want. On the Microsoft website, you can see the subscription prices for the home and student versions of Office 365. You can also see what it includes. As part of Office 365, you'll also be given multiple licenses, which will give you the ability to install the software on other computers as well. For the home version, you get up to five licenses. The small business version comes with licenses for up to 25 users. The mid-sized business provides for up to 300 users. There's also an enterprise version for larger companies that offers unlimited users. Once you subscribe to Office 365, you'll never have to worry about purchasing a new version of Office ever again. When a new version comes out, you will be able to update your software by signing into your Microsoft account. To subscribe to Office 365, go to office.products.com. If you're currently an Office 2013 subscriber, you can upgrade to Office 2016 without paying any additional charges. Follow the instructions on the Microsoft.com website. Once you've chosen the version of Office 365 or Purchase Publisher, Microsoft will guide you through the installation and setup. Microsoft does most of the work for you, so that all you have to do is sit and wait for Publisher to become ready to use. Whenever you open the majority of Office applications, such as Word or Excel, you will be taken to a start screen that allows you to decide exactly what you wish to do within the program. Publisher is no different. Each time you open Publisher, You'll see the start screen like the one shown here. From the start screen, you can do one of three things. You can open an existing publication that's stored on your computer or on the web. You can select a template to use to create a new publication, or you can start a new blank publication. Each file that you create in Publisher is called a publication. The publications you create can be saved in Publisher's default .pub format. 
let's learn how to open each of the three types of publications. An existing publication is defined as a publication you created in Publisher and saved in the default.pub format. To open an existing publication from the Start screen, go to the Start screen here and look at the column in the green section on the left hand side of the screen. If you have any existing publications, you'll see them on the left here. Simply click on the publication to open it. If you don't see any publications listed, click on Open Other Publications. You can then search your computer and OneDrive for the publication. While on the Start screen, you can also create a new publication from a template. You can see the publication templates shown here. These are simply the featured templates. Microsoft Publisher offers hundreds of templates you can use, from dozens of categories. We'll learn more about templates later in this lesson. For now, all you need to know is how to open a featured template. You open a featured template by clicking on it. You'll then see this window. To create the new template, click on the Create button. Also, if you're following along in Publisher as you take this course, do not push the Create button at this time. Instead, click on the X at the top right of the screen here. This will return you to the Start screen. A blank publication is also a template in Publisher. However, it's blank which means it does not have any design elements or formatting added to it. It's just as the name states, a blank template. To open a blank publication from the Start screen, click one of the blank publication buttons, as you can see here. Click the blank publication button that represents the size of the publication you need to create. We have portrait and landscape in A4 size, which is 8.5 inches by 11 inches. Click more blank page sizes if you need a different size. For the purpose of this lesson, we're going to click on blank 8.5 by 11, or blank A4 portrait. A new and blank publication then opens in the publisher window, as you can see here.